see, young America, we need to talk. You may think this is uncool, you may even think it is bogus, but I want to tell you about something that has everyone buzzing, something that concerns mature boys and girls just like you, something called grassroots. Grass 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 This is Aaron Ashley Simon. And this is Brandon Killer BH Hall. And welcome to another episode of Grassroots Podcast, where it's not just about where you're going, where you are currently, but it's also about where you came from. It's so crazy how how we even connected how and this how happened. this happened. <laughs> how this happened, right? <laughs> it, it, it's wild, but we're definitely going to get into that shortly. Um, but for those who are f- listening to this for the first time and or didn't even know that we were working on a podcast, this podcast is something really special. We wanted to not only talk about where people are now, where they're going, but more importantly, where they've been every point and stage in their life that has gotten them to the level of success that they are at now. I, we, we, we felt that this was important. You know what I mean? We both have musical backgrounds. We'll obviously get into that, you know, during this episode that you're listening to. But we felt that it was important to give, you know, talented people, artists, actors, athletes, a voice, a, a, you know, a platform that they could trust, that, you know, they could come on and be themselves. You know, we, we wouldn't uh, ask them any, you know, retarded questions or there wouldn't even be any rhetoric. They can come to a place and, and almost feel at home and know that their body of work and what they stand for is something that will be protected with, an, you know, obviously the utmost integri- integrity, but also just to let them know that we care about the culture at the end of the day. And I think that that's something that me and you shared mm-hmm. early on when we first met. We yeah. were so passionate and, and and so angelic in the same token. Like, <laughs> we've been used. <laughs> we have these dreams. and <laughs> Make it work, God. <laughs> Make it work. So... I think that's where we, you know, it, it was weird how, how we met and how we, it, it all it, it yeah. came together. <laughs> yeah, you, I, I, it's crazy. Like, I wouldn't have thought. So, uh, Brandon and I both met. We did a mini, uh, a mini MBA program at Rutgers for their business school. Mm. And uh, we sat at the same te- uh, table together. And part of our project was to basically analyze a company and figure out how we can better market that company and present it in a way that's going to help benefit them. Mm -hmm. And we actually chose Tidal, which is really interesting because we both have, like you said, a musical background, musical interests. And we were on the same wavelength definitely during that entire time. And then this podcast is like, the baby of that moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's crazy. You know, I, I was telling somebody in this industry, you really don't trust people. No. You know what I mean? And it not. and it's it's very hard to find uh, you know, someone that's genuine and 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 also has the same work ethic. And I know me, I'm I'm fucking ADHD man, I'm all <laughs> over the place. I, I am a, a, a bundle of just ideas, but being able to, you know, compress those ideas and then, you know, obviously distribute it out and obviously have someone on that same wavelength, I thought was just amazing, you know, obviously yeah. within you, Aaron. And then for us to just now have the same, like, we, we'll call each other and text each other, <laughs> just be like, yo, I was thinking this. And you'd be like, yo, I was thinking this. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. We both thinking the same shit. Mind you, not having a conversation and only knowing each other for a week. I knew that there was something special there. You know what I mean? I knew that that we had something. We just had to fine tune it. And then obviously, you know, when we finally came up with the name Grassroots, I, you know, I, I remember texting her and I was like, yo, Grassroots, that's the name. And I was like, I keep hearing that. That's the name. I think that that's it. We kept hearing it ever since we both agreed that this was going to be the name of the show. And yeah. here we are. Oh, man. I feel a tear coming right now. Oh, uh, nah, no, no, <laughs> no, no, nah, nah, we don't shed thug tears over here, no thug tears. <laughs> At the crossroads. crossroads. <laughs> but, you know, of course we, that was kind of like a couple of months ago, but what I want to get into 
is, is our past. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you said we both have had situations where people took advantage of us or screwed us over and, and just certain things that have made us who we are today. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm very private about my personal life, mm -hmm. but you know what? For this podcast, I'm going to open it up because there are some people who are interested to learn more about Aaron, and I'm sure they're interested in learning more about Killer VH. Yeah, so let's, let's bring in the applause for that. That's major. Thank you. Thank you. To our sponsors, yes. thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I want to I want to start off with you. What was that moment for you personally where it was that pivotal moment that helped shape you as an individual, whether good, whether it was a bad moment or anything like that. Mm. Uh, when someone told me no, someone told me no. When I was younger, uh, you know, I grew up around just musicians. Like a lot of people, uh, I was surrounded by my, my cousin. He was in the boot camp clip with, with, with freaking Buckshot. Uh, then, you know, I was, a lot of people don't know this, I used to sing when I was younger. So when I was an, uh, a little kid, I was still singing and uh, I was dealing with Wu-Tang at the time. And my friends, they were about to get signed to Wu-Tang as this new group. And one of the managers was kind of like, nah, nah, we don't we don't want you in the group. Day of, day, day of the photo shoot. Day of the oh, photo man, shoot. that's the worst. I, I, I was fresh. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I was fresh. I had, you want to talk about match, man? Pfft. I had yellow and, and, and purple Adidas. I had the throwback jazz jersey. I was fresh. <laughs> Came outside the house like, yo, we going to go shoot? We lit? And he's like, nah, nah, we're not, we're not taking you. I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. And then I laid off. And then, I, again, I, I kind of just fell into it. I mean, uh, uh, one of my, uh, he's like a brother to me, uh, a friend of mine by the name of Worm. He introduced me to Joe Budden. And then mm -hmm. uh, Joe... He thought I was crazy. I had all these crazy ideas. And again, if you know me, I always, I'm always all over the place, hence the ADHD. <laughs> so I was all over the place, but he saw something in me. And he was kind of like, stick by me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of you. You, you, you. you ain't dumb, but you just a little off <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but um, I'm going to take care of you. And then, yeah. and then I, I promised you know, my friend Worm, I was like, yo, I'm going um, you know, to take care of him. Because he was leaving to go you know, pursue acting. And he was like, look. I'm, I'm leaving you with this. This this is my baby. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm leaving you with this. And I've just been working ever since. And the first show I did, um, it was uh, it was in the city with no mic because <laughs> the mic was dead. <laughs> and oh, I lost my voice with no mic. I know that that sounds crazy, but <laughs> my dumb ass was still screaming like people could hear me. And um, Joe was like, all right, like, I think I think I think you're all right. And then that's that's when the story for me began. Oh man, I did not know you used to sing. Yeah, it's a snapple fact. A lot of people don't know that. The people that the people I came up with, they know me. They know I, I they they still have records that I've I've, I've sang on and I've ad libbed on. And even for Joe, there's a, a few records. There's a record um, uh, that you keep running away. There's a record that uh, that uh, I sang on there. I think it's OLS Four. I believe the record is. I, I'm on that record. I'm singing on the record. A lot of people don't know that. Because um, I just don't make it public until now, obviously. But there's a few records that we've done where I've went in and actually still, you know, s yeah. sung certain parts on. And I just don't, uh, it's not for me anymore. <laughs> I can't hold the tune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to make you sing on one of these podcast episodes. <laughs> Yo, if I'm singing, you're, you're, you're dropping bars. I'm telling you. Y'all got to see Aaron. Aaron dresses like a rocker. <laughs> fucking hip-hop artist that just is just waiting to drop fire right now <laughs> minus the bars <laughs> but maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll come ready i'm gonna have to pull like an eight mile have those written <laughs> up come out the bathroom ready to drop them bars um but no that's that's really dope and i, I think it's so cool how we it's it's kind of like our logo. Like there's layers. Yeah. If you look at our grassroots podcast logo, there's different layers, and that's doesn't just represent the layers and the stages of life, but also layers in terms of people. Yeah. Because for like you said, for me, not a lot of people know that I actually used to be a huge rock music fan. Like it's Serious? yes, like I there was a point in time I didn't listen to hip hop. Like, That's I didn't crazy. listen to hip-hop really at all, except it was on the radio. Like, I was listening to Green Day, Blink-182, Linkin Park. So when Chester Bennington passed away, I was so sad because, like, Linkin Park was that group for me that mm -hmm. just the music and the lyrics, it 
epitomized my teenage anguish yeah. and 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 just energy. And they actually inspired me to play the drum set. I used to play the drum set. I envy you. <laughs> I envy you. I, I grew up playing the violin. <laughs> me too. Yo, Look, listen. See, see listen. What I'm saying? This, this is weird, man. This is weird. It's weird. It's weird. I'm telling you, the way that this whole happened, I'm telling you, this whole shit, the way Stars that this happened, lining. man. And I'm t- it's, it's crazy because I used to play I used to play the drum set. I played violin. I, I did the trumpet for a bit. I played the guitar, and I also played the piano. I do want to get back to at least playing the guitar and piano because I can do that in my, in my own apartment. Um, but music has always, like, a I have such a love and passion for music. And I, I would say it's mutually the same as sports, but I have so much passion for it. Like, it's kind of funny that I didn't become an artist or a musician. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's just like I find so much, it's kind of like my comfort zone. Like, it was, music was something that brought me away from the tr- the trials and tribulations of when I was growing up. Like, I went through a lot of stuff, you know. I had my mom being sick, my parents divorcing. You know, even like um, most people don't know, like sometimes I, I, I go through a little bit of anxiety because it runs through my family. And just like even dealing with that and the pressures and stuff from that as a teenager. And, you know, I, I wasn't the, it was weird when I was growing up, I wasn't the most popular kid. Mm-hmm. But then I also really wasn't a super popular kid like my brother. So like I didn't have a whole lot of friends. And yeah. I don't know if it's because I was an introvert or I was just like not into what they were doing. Like, where I grew up, these kids were doing, some of these kids were doing, like, hardcore drugs. Like, there's one drug called Blues or something. It's a Carolyn <laughs> Lace or something. <laughs> that sounds wild. Yeah, and I was just, I was just kind of like that kid who was in the popular crowd because I was an athlete, but I was also just kind of, I can't lie, I was so awkward growing up. Like, <laughs> I was so awkward. Like, I, I don't think I glowed up until, like, college. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit in high school, but... You know, it's 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 interesting. Like, it creeps me out. The more that we're talking, the more I'm finding so much connections with between you and I. I'm just like, yo, this is so wild. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I mean, let, let's get a little bit into you. You know what I mean? Oh, like man. your 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 career path is is admirable. You know. Thank you. You're young and 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 very successful, in in just content. Like, how do you how have you manage to be so creative in such a short time and have so much success, uh, success yeah. that you've had and like you've bounced from different company to company just creating waves and vibes <laughs> of just magical content yeah. <laughs> out there well I mean I would say it kind of stems back from how my mom raised me my mom raised me to be a renaissance woman so mm-hmm. she never was like oh only do one thing I think the people who are the best creative individuals are the ones that have experienced or opened up to many different things, whether it's culture or sounds or even content itself, content in in the sense of like movies and tracks and all that stuff. And she always, you know, of course she always told me like, whatever you want to do, whatever you're passionate about, like always go 110%, but Mm -hmm. like always take in your environment and the things that can inspire you every single day. So for me, that kind of work ethic, I anytime I come into a situation, like whether it's a revolt or a cycle where I'm at now, I kind of want to look and see how how can I see myself fitting in. Now, of course, I'm sure as you know, like of course, when you first join a company, you think of how you can fit in, and sometimes it does not shape into the actual way yeah, it is. I, you I gotta, know. <laughs> you got to keep finding your way a little bit, but um, I, I never I never let things hold me back. I always try to think like, okay, like how can I still shift the paradigm or how can I still do something that's so unique that no one's really doing or how can I contribute in a way that the company's not doing Mm -hmm. and kind of take it from there Um, and it can be anything as simple as helping to develop a social media plan which is what I did with the Wall Street Journal and help build their sports uh, Twitter account Mm -hmm. Um, even some of the strategies I I did as an intern they they utilize and probably still use it Yeah. Um, so I just you know I, I always try to balance the creative, the creativity with the business side. Yeah. And I think a lot of times when people come into this kind of field or just any creative field, I think they're either too business or too creative. And that actually yeah. can hurt you. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it's it's amazing to know about like your relationship with you and Joe because 
Joe has that. He has such an amazing business sense and a creative sense. Mm -hmm. And I also see that you have that too. And typically the people who are most successful are the ones that are able to see two sides of a coin. Yeah. And I think my ability to be able to see that two sides of the coin has helped me elevate myself faster and be in a position that most people who are 25 years old aren't in. I, I agree. I agree. And that's why I said the, the one thing that uh, kind of drew me to you was just your, your passion. You know, someone at your age, especially in this generation now, they, a lot of people lack passion and, and they lack drive. Yeah. You know, and, and again, I'm I'm older than you, but to, you have like the drive like me, like you were moving at the same horsepower I was when we were, you know, trying to yeah. put this project together. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, fuck, they don't get it. They don't get it. All right, let's just figure it out. Let's just do it. Like, yeah. They'll get it. And then to, you know, after the, the uh, presentation was done and then to have all these people say, yo, you guys are like amazing. Like you guys killed that. And me and you were both just being modest, you know, just saying, no, we did it as a team. They're like, no, you didn't. No, no, <laughs> no, no, you didn't. We know you both did that. We, 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 we got it. We got it. I, I knew that there was something there. You know I mean, I'm, I almost feel like I want to give you like a nickname. <laughs> oh, I, I, just, man. I just don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> we have to figure that out later down the line. <laughs> I don't know. I know that's random, but again. ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, I, I think when it comes to people in my generation, I don't think it's so much that they don't have passion. I just I just think that they don't know what they want. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they try and live life enough to figure out what their passion is. Like, I've had someone talk to me before. They, you know, I'm not going to, of course, I'm not going to put out names, but... Mm -hmm. Talk to me basically about how, like, they're trying to figure out, like, what their passion is and the route that they took. They may not think that that's what it is what they want to do. And I straight up said, if money did not exist today, would you still love doing that job? Mm -hmm. And it took a while to answer that question. I'm like, well, that's not your passion. And she, and she basically was like, well, how do I figure that out? You got to try stuff. Yeah. You have to go and experience life. Like, if people think, like... Yeah, I'm I'm ahead and I'm 25, but I'm still getting my shit together. Like, yeah. well, my shit is not all together. Yeah. Like, and and that's life. You're not gonna have all the answers, but you gotta try different things in order to have your passion. Like, I did not expect for me to do a podcast at all yeah. in my career. To be honest, me me either. Again, I was if if you know my background, you know I've just been. Uh, working with Joe, I'm I'm, I'm his hype man. I've, I've written comedic skits. I've been on tour. I've I've written records for other people. I've worked on uh, executive producing books and, on in films. Like I've done so many other things. And even when when I started to see him do podcasts, and then I, then I saw this whole wave of podcasts, I was like, wow, this would be interesting. But I never thought that I'd be here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I never thought for one second, for one second, mm -hmm. I would be behind the mic in this realm. And I, it's interesting. It's fun to me. You know what I mean? I think it, it's it's going to be a cool journey. It's yeah. going to be a cool journey. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Okay. I have, this is like a side note. I've been thinking about <laughs> oh, this. Oh, man. Here we go. I've been Here we go. This. Here we go. Yo, why is everyone in your guys' group, you, Joe, even your homies here, why is every single one of you bald and have a beard? <laughs> like, is this like some click that we're unaware of or some like... You know, you join our group, you gotta shave your head stuff. Like, yo, man, bald head niggas is taking over, man. With beards, we taking over. We bring, we bringing the power back home, man. <laughs> nah, but um, I don't know. <laughs> I was really in, in my crew. I was like the the last one. I was holding on. I, my my hairline. I was the guy with that always had waves and good hair. And then mm -hmm. one day I was on tour, and it was like, yo, big. I ain't gonna lie, man. Yeah. Hairline starting to look a little crazy. You may, <laughs> may want to reconsider. And I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm fine. And then I saw a picture that a fan sent me. He was like, hey, man, great show. And I couldn't even say thank you because I just saw my hairline in the oh, picture. Man. And I was like, oh, I was like, you know. I was like, my hair my hair is gone. And one day I woke up and uh, I, I cut it. I, po I, I posted it on, on Instagram. The, the title was... Uh, who who want who loves this hairline anyway? Clean shave, clean shave. <laughs> a la fucking Beyonce's record. Uh, but I was just like, yo, I, I, and you know, I feel liberated. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do. I feel great. I, I don't know why I didn't go bald when, when I was <laughs> when I had hair. <laughs> it's great. It's the easiest thing, gentlemen. I'm telling you, if you if you're out there holding on to your hairline and your shit is fucked up and Let you're go. putting and yeah and you're putting sharpies on your hairline and, and fucking permanent markers, whatever you're doing. 
Let it go, man. Trust me. It's liberating. Let it it's go. the best shit ever in Not life. Not everyone's like LeBron where you can pay to get it back. Yeah, yeah. I don't got that kind of bread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, that's that's something I noticed. And I was, like, afraid to say it. I'm like, wait, is this, like, a pet or something? Is there? Am I missing something? <laughs> like, what is going on? Nah, man. Well, now we got, I got a question for you. Oh, man. <laughs> I got a question okay. for you. <laughs> Why do all these people trust you that are famous? And I know that that sounds crazy. <laughs> You're 25 and you have some, some I'm not going to name names, but you got some big athletes and artists kind of in, in your corner that you, you're you just, oh, I got invited to this album release party oh, for man. Jay-Z and Beyonce, but I don't feel like going right now, but I'm just going to go home and just watch ESPN. How, how did that happen? <laughs> like. <laughs> By the way, I love that voice. Like that's, that's gonna be the Aaron <laughs> I, voice for every yeah, podcast moving forward. I practice that. I practice it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't. To be honest, like I don't know. I, 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 now that I'm thinking about it, I just I think it's because just I'm I'm genuine and real. Mm-hmm. Like I I always try to help people, no matter what, in some shape or form. Now, granted, I can't. I can't help everyone at the same time, or et cetera, because mm-hmm. I can only I only have so many hours in a day and so forth. But I always try to find a way to help people, whether it's answering questions or anything like that. Or even if it's like I can't help them or do something, I try and steer them into the right direction. So I think it's because of, like, my willingness to want to help people mm-hmm. and just me being genuine. Like, I, like I, I know what my strengths are. Are I know what my weaknesses are. Mm-hmm. Like I always tell people, listen, I am when I'm passionate, I am I am fiery. Like yeah. I am Puerto Rican and raised by a New Yorker. So yeah. I'm be loud and no, passionate. No, y'all Puerto Ricans on. <laughs> shit, we're crazy as hell sometimes. But um but like I, I, I know who I am as a person and mm-hmm. I tell people like this is who I am. And you either can accept it at the end of the day or not. And if you yeah. don't, like, I'm still going to sleep well at night. Like, there's <laughs> there's one time I had someone that, like, I don't know if they were joking or serious, but they were basically just, like, saying how they don't like me. And I'm like, well, I'm still going to get a good night rest of sleep. Yeah, you're going to sleep just fine. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, and, and I think that the fact that I am real, that I am genuine, and that I actually try to help people, there's not a lot of I, I would say from my experience now, it's different for everyone, but from what I've seen, like, I, there's not a lot of people in this industry that are like that. There's yeah. the bandwagon tendencies. Mm-hmm. There are the wave the, hoppers, the wave hoppers, the 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 flip floppers who say yeah. who may talk shit about someone one day or 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 be opinionated about something. But then the next second, they instantly changed it. Yeah. And. I'm just not like that. Like, if I'm passionate about something and if I believe in something, like, I'm going to advocate for it. And especially when it comes to upcoming artists and female artists, too. That's mm-hmm. another thing, too. Like, when I was at Revolt, I really tried to get some really dope female artists on board with some of her content. Like, I did something with Bia when she mm-hmm. dropped her song. Um, uh Awesome, awesome chick from Philadelphia. Yeah, who very, very your, talented. Keep your eyes out. Her name is Bree Steves. She is her music. Oh my god! Like she hasn't even dropped her music, and she played me it. That this shit is fire. Yeah. Like she is definitely gonna be a next upcoming person. And um, but yeah, I mean, I just I, I'm sure you can get that vibe from me. Like I just I'm just I am who I am, and if that sounds all Doctor Susie and whatever, <laughs> like, but. I just try and help, and if and if you're passionate and, and I see that passion and your potential, like, I try and help as much as I can because I've had people help me along the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a lot like me. I mean, again, back to just me when I started out in music, that it, it, that's how it started. I was just trying to help and just wanting to be a part of something great and, and just be an asset. And then even how even my, my name, Killer BH, to how that came about is is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just in the studio with Joe. He At this time, he's, he's working on Move, uh, Move Music too, And I was bored. I was breaking yeah. night in the studio. Li- literally, we would go into the studio at, like, 12 in the afternoon, would not get out until about, like, 7 in the morning. Mm-hmm. No exaggeration. And one day I just was bored. So I was like, all right, let me come in the booth and just fuck around. Let me make them laugh because we, 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 he was stumped on something. It's something bad had happened. I don't remember what it was, but something bad had happened. And he was he was just like, all right, like I'm, I'm, I'm in a bad space. So I went in the booth and just started rapping. But it was just me just joking around. And then uh, 
I came out and he was laughing. Everybody was laughing at this point. You know, uh, I think at the, at the time, like Jay Mills is in the studio, then, then Stack Bundles came in, and then uh, Fab came in later on and, and heard it, and they were all laughing. And then Joe was like, "Yo, you should do this." I'm like, D- "Do what? <laughs> what, are, what are, <laughs> fuck are you talking about right now?" He's like, "No, you should, you should, we should make a skit." I'm like, "Nah, I'm, I'm cool, Joe. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm just chilling." He's like, "No, we're doing it." And I came in the next day, and he said the exact same thing. And then we did it, and then he put it out, and then people, like till this day, you know, the, the shoes they they still yeah. say these skits, and they were they wanted more, and I was I was flabbergasted. I'm like, y'all really think this is funny? Like I I was confused. So then we just kind of turned it into just Killer BH being the cliche rapper that <laughs> are out there, you know, the the flamboyant, the, the rapper that thinks he's just so nice and, and <laughs> bars and kill you, but he's really whack. <laughs> he's, he, he, he doesn't realize that he's whack. Everyone else around him can see that he's whack, and he yeah. does not realize that he's whack. And it just took off from there. Till this day, people are still like, "Yo, you got to put out a project. You got to you got to do something, please." We're waiting for it. Even even filming this, you know, gearing up for. <laughs> the release for release for this, they're like, "Yo, please tell me there's gonna be skits on there, please." I'm like, "No, I'm trying, I'm trying to be mature, guys. I'm trying to fucking do some real meaningful content in my yeah. life. I don't want to fucking rap comedic bars all the day, all all the time, rather." But um, yeah, it's it's funny how just things happen. Uh, you know, when when you you least expect it. You know what I mean? Again. Even for us meeting the way that we did and, and having guests on, our, our, our lineup is crazy. Wild. You know what I mean? Our, our lineup, our lineup is kind of wild. Um, and I think you're going to get a, a great scope into who we are, what we stand for, and then obviously the, the guests that we're, we're going to have on the show. I think you guys are going to be pleased. And we look forward to just sharing these these great moments with you guys, man. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be amazing, I think. Yeah. So, Gosh, it's it's wild how many people have just even reached out to you, let alone just saying how they want to come on to this podcast. For whoever is listening, I'm telling you right now, we have some dope stuff lined up, and we're going to be throwing some surprises left and right. And it, it's, yeah. it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. fun. It's definitely, it's definitely going to be a fun uh, ride. And, and before, before we kind of like wrap things up a little bit, it's crazy how I've kind of noticed this through various people that have talked about basically like their come up. And one of the things is like usually when it comes to come up, it's unexpected. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't think that you going into the booth and just rapping and having fun, like that actually transpired into something else. And then yeah. like for me, I created a blog because I was bored mm-hmm. and that actually shot me towards the media route. And I wasn't even planning on taking a media route. And I just think it's so interesting just to hear everyone's backstories and just see, like, moments where you didn't even expect something to happen or moments where you didn't even take something seriously at the time mm-hmm. ended up being something that something you were major. amazing. Yeah. It speaks volumes. Well, I want you guys to stay tuned. I want you guys to come on this ride with us because I'm telling you, once you get on this train with us, you're not going to want to get <laughs> off. You're not going to want to get off. To my co-host, Aaron, thank you. We're going to do some magic, and to the viewers and listeners, stay tuned. Grassroots. Excited. Whoop, whoop.